Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. If you'd like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you'll find a link to, the, to my Ravelry page where you can see all of the patterns I have available for you to purchase and knit up for yourself. Also in the description below, you will find a link to the Watch Barber Knits Facebook group where we continue the conversations that we start here on the YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love for you to come over and join us. It's a little bit more interactive and we can share pictures. And of course, I love chatting with people in the comments. So please, if you feel moved to leave a comment, do. And I try to respond to as many as possible. Today, I have a technique uh, video for you and it is about lifelines. Now, you might be like, what is a lifeline? And that is what this video is about. A lifeline is something that you use in your knitting, especially when you're doing complex knitting, to give yourself kind of an uh, opportunity to do over, <laughs> okay? It's when you are working on something that is complex and has multiple different levels of complexity, you can put in a lifeline, which is simply a piece of waste yarn that is one th run through a row that you have finished and you just leave it in your knitting. And then you continue through complex things. And if you make a error, that, that waist yarn is a space. It's saving those stitches that you can then go back and pick up and frog back to that and try it again. It's a do over. Now, I have done a demonstration video for you, but I'm going to talk a little bit about how you do it and why you do it and the tools. Now, the most basic tools you need are waste yarn and a yarn needle. Here it is. Now, when, when it comes to waste yarn, I prefer to use mercerized cotton, which is a slightly shiny, smooth cotton. And the reason why I like to use mercerized cotton is because it doesn't grab on. It, it flows smoothly. So when the time comes to pull it out, there's no worries. I also like to use this lime green because I rarely knit with lime green. And I like to use a color that's very easy for me to see in my knitting. So this is what I use. I have a whole skein of it. I actually can't find it. These are pieces I found in my little, one of my little stash things. And I keep little bits of this in almost all of my um, different little bags and things because you never know when you're going to need waste yarn. Waste yarn is good for like when you have to do stitches on a thumb and all those kinds of things. I probably need to get another ball of this, but again, this is just like thinner weight. Now, depending on what you're knitting, you might need thinner or you might need slightly thicker. You don't necessarily have to use the same weight yarn that you're knitting with, but if all you have is like worsted weight, of your waist yarn and you're knitting with finger weight, that's not a good idea. You can always put thinner yarn through, but putting fatter yarn through is eh. And honestly, if you can't, if you don't have the mercerized cotton, any yarn you've got, you, anything in a pinch, you know, it'll solve it. I also know there's a lot of people who swear by using dental floss. Uh, you want the um, like unflavored kind. You don't want, <laughs> you don't want minty knitting. Minty knitting, that sounds hysterical. So you need your waist yarn and you need a uh, yarn needle. Now, another thing you can do, let me get out, where did I stick it? So here is my sample stuff. If you are using interchangeables, which this is not, so that's not helpful. <laughs> if you're using interchangeable needles, interchangeable needles have lifeline holes in them. They are not in the tips, but they are in zip the cable. Oh. Now, if you'll look, let me see if I can show you. Ooh, come on, focus. There you go. Ooh, focus. 
they're little tiny holes. One of these holes <laughs> My tiny Ziploc bag doesn't want to open. One of these little holes is bigger than the others, and it is for your tightening thing. See, right? That's what that is for. But the other tiny hole, we're turning it upside down is a bad point. So the other tiny hole that you can see there, focus, is your lifeline hole. And what that is, is you can put your lifeline yarn, which for this is when you need like the dental floss, you need something really fine. And you can run it through there. And as you're knitting, it will run your lifeline for you. So that is actually, a, if you're using interchangeables, a really good way to do it. But, and you will see in my demo, I talked to you about if you're using stitch, mar stitch markers, <sighs> If you are using that lifeline trick with an interchangeable and you are using slip stitch markers, make sure that they're the removable kind because it's going to trail through all that lifeline is going to trail through all your stitches and it will go through your stitch markers and then your stitch markers aren't going to want to move up a row because they're going to be stuck on your lifeline. So the tools you really need are some sort of waste yarn and a yarn needle or an interchangeable set that has the lifeline hole that's not necessary you can always add in the lifeline so now we will go to the demo here we go i have just this piece of lace that i knit up just to do this and as with all lace it looks kind of a hot mess <laughs> Um, but when it's not blocked, I have a lifeline in here already that we're going to show, I'm going to use to show you. And the first thing is how to put in a lifeline. Now, hopefully you have a lace pattern or a pattern where it has a relatively, uh, like knit two together free pearl side or a rest row, people call it. And that's what I've done here. So when you have finished, or when you want to place your lifeline, it is best to do it after you've finished a wrong side row because there's less going on. So I have my waste yarn. Now, what I'm going to do is run it through the stitches. Just like that. See, I've inserted through this middle part of the stitch and you can use your needle and pull it through. Now you can see I want to leave a tail here. Leave as much tail as you can because you don't want to accidentally pull it through. I'm going to try to angle this so you can really see what I'm doing. So you insert your yarn needle through the loop. See beneath this, the cable, let me pull it up here a little bit closer. So you wanna make sure you get through this loop. See there, oh, nope, see I split a stitch. You don't wanna do that. It's right here, see? Now I just put this stitch marker on here so that you can see you really want to avoid going through your stitch marker because then your stitch marker will not move <laughs> so we're going to continue here let me find the hole there we go make try not to split stitches try not to split your yarn and what i meant is you know stick it through your yarn don't do that just get in this hole that is the stitch you just created. Pulling it through. I'm gonna just stick it through here and here, and you will get to the point where you can do it fairly quickly, and all you're doing is running this piece of waste yarn through these stitches.
you will not be trying to do this looking through an iPhone at what you're doing. So it's kind of like operating under a magnifying lens. So you will totally be able to do this faster than I can. And there we go. So pulled it through. I removed my yarn needle. Oop, I just hit my yarn ball. Did you hear the ding? Now make sure this, you've got plenty on this side and plenty on this side. So if you need to stretch your work, you don't lose this. Sometimes I even leave enough extra so that I can tie those together. So I really don't lose it. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is that once you have your lifeline in, you then just continue knitting. I'm gonna get my yarn in position. I'm gonna get my other needle. And all you do is knit. Now, you see how that did weird stuff? I'm just gonna tug it a little bit. And you're knitting and you knit your pattern, get this tension correctly. And when you're knitting, that lifeline is going to be in there. So you gotta watch for it. So the pattern I was doing was yarn over, slip one, knit two together. And this is where you gotta be careful. See, I'm knitting two together, but I don't want to get behind there I mean, it's not gonna really hurt anything, but I don't like it getting in the middle of my stitches. And I'm gonna pass, slip stitch over, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one. And as you can see, this didn't actually do anything, so I'm gonna make him go away. Slip one, knit two together. That stitch marker was just for demonstration. Pass slip stitch over, yarn over, knit one. Okay, I don't need to knit the whole thing because I think you get the idea. You just need to make sure that you're not catching up your waist yarn when you're knitting. Now, what is the purpose of the lifeline? Well, if you notice that you've made some sort of glaring mistake in here, you're like, oh no, what you do, I know this is hard to watch, you just pull your needles out, just like that. <gasps> Boop. Now, I'm gonna take out this one that I just put in. Boop, boop. And then I want to go all the way back to this one. So what I'm going to do is take my needle and pick up the stitches. See where this is? You gotta find where it goes in and stick your needle through there. And then you find where the next stitch is and you pick that up and you find where the next stitch is and you pick it up and you find where the next stitch is and so on and so on. And what you've done is you've created this little magical path. Let me get that. So that one I kind of split, it'll be fine. You created this little magical path of waste yarn called your lifeline that you can follow and pick it up like that and just continue down the row and it'll be on your needle and you can frog down to it or you can simply frog it. Look at that, bye 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 bye. I'm making all that, there was a mistake in there, something went wrong, so we're gonna take it all out. And it's like, oh no, oh no, I can't believe you're doing that. But look, boink, 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 boink. Boink, boink, boink. Looky there. Because we have that lifeline, all the stitches are still there. So now 
all I have to do is what I was saying, is run your needle and follow where that lifeline is. And that's how you pick it up. And that one, you know what? Remember when I said don't split your stitches? That's sort of what I did there. You can really see it, see right there? I split it, so I've gotta get there and not split my stitch. Then pick up this one and this one. And you just keep on going. Now, this might seem tedious, but it is nowhere near as tedious as knitting backwards <laughs> through all of those rows I frogged out. One would, I hope you agree with me. And then the final stitch, there we go. And then we just slide it on and you can grab your waste yarn, pull it out, and you are back on your needles at a spot where you know your pattern is right, your knitting is right. I'm gonna slide this all the way down to here and we are ready to get started all over again. I hope that that was helpful and that now you have a better idea of how to put a lifeline in. Now, the question you might ask now is, when should I put in a lifeline? Why is so you can catch your mistakes and go backwards. When? So if you're doing complex lace, you might want to do it when you finish like between repeats, depending on how complicated the lace is, you can put in a lifeline every, when you finish a repeat and you know it's right, put in a lifeline, next repeat. Or if you are switching between one stitch, one like lace stitch, another lace stitch, you might wanna put in that lifeline. Uh, if you are working on a garment, and it's like a bottom up garment, you might wanna put that lifeline in before you start any hip or bust shaping in case you change your mind on the shaping. One of the great things about knitting your own garments is the whole try it on, especially knitting them around, is trying it on as you go. And you might wanna choose certain points to put it in so that you can try it on and you're like, oh no, I started decreasing too fast or I didn't decrease enough. And so then you can go back to where you started instead of having to tink backwards or maybe not quite get it. So all of those places, it's any place you, put it in when you know you're right. <laughs> when you've gotten to the point where you're like, yes, I totally know, I nailed that, put in that lifeline. And, or if something's coming ahead that you're like, that's kind of scary. Put it in so that you know you have that point to come back to where you're confident that everything is good. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it the thumbs up. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.